Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over a 500 mile review of the Segway Ninebot Max G2. Now, I'm not gonna go over every single detail of this scooter because you can find all that information in the 250 mile review I have on this scooter, which is linked above. What I will be going over though is my experience with this scooter since I bought it when it was initially released last summer. I'll go over the things I love about it, the things I dislike, as well as some things I've run across over the 500 miles of riding this scooter. So without further delay, let's jump into the details. All right, so a little bit of background on the Segway 9Bot Max G2. This scooter was actually released in the summer of 2023 and was one of the most highly anticipated scooter launches in recent memory. And the reason why is that this scooter is the highly anticipated successor to the very successful 9Bot G30 series, which if you're not familiar with it, is basically a tank of a scooter, which is super reliable and basically has a cult following at this point. Now what the Max G2 was bringing to the table was a full full suspension and a host of other features which made this stand apart from its predecessor. So around the time that Segway started shipping the initial Indiegogo orders, I decided to place an order of my own and the scooter came to my doorstep within about a week. And so I was riding that scooter end of June and I started documenting my experience beginning of July. And I'll tell you what, this scooter out of the box had a ton of torque, really good acceleration and honestly was surprisingly quick for a commuter scooter with 450 watts of nominal power. Now in the following weeks of the scooter's launch, you started to see some reports from people online uh, where they were experiencing overheating issues after riding the scooter in hilly areas or riding for an extended period of time, the scooter would throw a code 40 uh, and they'd have to stop riding and wait for the scooter to cool down before it would allow them to ride it again. So not ideal. Uh, you also saw reports of phantom braking. Basically, if you were going downhill, you know, above and beyond the maximum speed limit of the scooter, the scooter would try and slow you down. Unfortunately, it did it very abruptly and aggressively, uh, which if you weren't ready for it was really startling. Now, although I didn't personally experience the overheating issue, I absolutely experienced the phantom braking, and I actually documented that in a variety of videos that you can find uh, in the Segway 9Bot Max G2 playlist that I have on this channel. Now, strangely enough, all of those early issues are actually gonna lead me into one of the things that I like most about this scooter, and that's the fact that it has a solid app that comes with it, as well as over-the-air updates, which is absolutely huge. And here's the reason why. There's a lot of scooters out there today that don't have apps or the ability to update over the air. And so what does that mean? Well, you get a scooter, uh, it comes in the mail, people start riding it around, having a great time, and then there's some user-reported issues. Unfortunately, what you see is what you get. The company's not gonna push out any update because there's no mechanism to do that. With the Ninebot Max G2, as soon as Segway got wind of some of these issues, they started working on updates and were pushing those firmware updates out. And I'm happy to say that um, over the last five or six months, those updates have, in my experience, completely solved the issue of overheating uh, as well as phantom braking riding in downhill scenarios. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about that is all of those updates did come with some sacrifices in performance, uh, specifically acceleration, the torquiness of the scooter and its hill climbability. We did get some of that back uh, from future uh, firmware updates, but it's still not the same as it was when it was first released. But let me tell you what, this scooter is no slouch and we'll get into that in a moment. And that brings us to the second thing that I absolutely love about this scooter is its hill climbability. Now, keep in mind, the 9Bot Max G2 is a single motor commuter scooter. So it's got 450 watts of nominal power and is capable of outputting a peak 1000 watts. Uh, and so with me, I do all of my testing in a variety of places. I've tested this out uh, in a parking garage I've tested this out uh, in some hilly uh, neighborhood communities. And I've also tested this out multiple times at Phoenix's South Mountain, which if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's eight and a half miles to all three lookout points, which is about 2,000 feet in elevation gain. And I'll tell you what, this scooter actually was able to handle that. Uh, before the firmware updates, I was actually able to get to all three lookout points nonstop with no issue whatsoever. Uh, after the firmware updates, I'm still able to climb that. It's just in the very end of the ride. Uh, it can't make it up the last 150 feet or so. Um, you gotta push the scooter up. But guess what? That's 150 feet uh, out of, you know, eight and a half miles of riding. So not a big deal. 
overall, it's still a solid hill climber. So light uh, to moderate hills, not a problem at all. Now, if you live in a place that's got really steep hills and San Francisco style hills, I'll tell you what, it's probably not the scooter for you. You're definitely gonna wanna go the dual motor route because although Segway does state this scooter will climb, you know, 22% grade, the reality is that 22% grade, you're gonna be going like two miles an hour, three miles an hour, and that is not ideal at all whatsoever. Might as well hop off the scooter, put it into walk mode, and walk it up the hill at that point. Uh, so super steep hills, you might wanna go look at the dual motor route. You can have a much better experience. But light to moderate with this scooter, you're good to go. Now the third thing that I absolutely love about the Segway 9 Bot Max G2 is its range. Now, lots of manufacturers uh, state, you know, theoretical range figures. In this case, Segway states 43 miles of maximum theoretical range. And every manufacturer out there quotes theoretical range. Well, what is theoretical range? Well, usually it's a 165 pound rider riding on completely flat and smooth ground on a windless day, 77 degrees Fahrenheit with little or uh, no stop and go. So those are basically treadmill conditions, which is as far away from reality as you can get. In my experience, most scooters and e-bikes get anywhere from 50 to 60% of that max theoretical range. And in my testing with the Segway 9Bot Max G2, I was actually able to get 74% of that range. I actually tested this scooter out on a blistering hot day here in Phoenix, Arizona with tons of stop and go. Um, you know, varying road conditions, a little bit of incline and decline along the way. And I was able to squeeze out about 32 miles of range out of the 43 that Segway claims, which in my book is absolutely solid performance. And that was me riding around in sport mode. If I drove around in, let's say, drive mode, which has a top speed of 16 miles an hour, I could have absolutely, you know, squeezed out a few more miles. So overall range performance on this scooter is excellent. And part of that has to do with Segway's ridey long technology, which is like, you know, some software and hardware modifications, especially in the tires that they've made to maximize range on this scooter. And that's gonna take us to the fourth thing that I absolutely love about the Segway 9 Bot Max G2, and that's its smooth and refined ride. Like I mentioned before, one of the things that differentiates the Max G2 from its predecessor is the fact that it's got full suspension. It's actually got a front dampener as well as rear coil springs, and the combination of the two make for an absolutely pillow soft ride. I don't know how Segway does it, but it is really comfortable. I've got a bunch of scooters that I tested on a regular basis, and to be honest with you, even looking at some off-road scooters, this has got to have one of the plushest suspensions out there. I've also found this scooter to be whisper quiet. You can hardly hear the motors, and when you're riding around, you basically blend in with your environment. I've tested a variety of other scooters where you can hear you know, that motor running. With the Segway, it's probably one of the quietest scooters I've ever tested. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the suspension is it does have those coil springs in the rear. Uh, so if you are driving really fast and you hit a bump abruptly or you know, let's say ride over kind of a, a deep crack uh, in the asphalt, uh, you may hear uh, the back suspension recoil real quick, which sounds like a thumping sound. Um, Good news is you can actually soften or harden the suspension to your liking. Uh, but one recommendation I do have to Segway is for future iterations of this scooter to add some kind of rubber dampening there so that the recoil isn't uh, so abrupt. But that's really in extreme cases. I Like 99% of your ride, you're not gonna hear any of that. It's only when you hit those um, unfortunate bumps in the road a little too fast. Now, a final thing I wanna mention about the suspension on the 9Bot Max G2, especially in the back, is if you're riding in rainy conditions and you get those things really wet, they can develop a squeak uh, over time. So my suggestion is if you do ride in the rain, just wipe it down. Uh, and if you do hear any kind of a squeaking, uh, I definitely would just put some lubrication on those coil springs and that'll go away immediately. I've done it multiple times in the past solves the issue. And finally, the fifth thing that I love about this scooter is the community that supports it. There are a ton of Segway riders out there. Uh, and if you go onto online forums, you're gonna find a plethora of support and knowledge out there. If you have a question, the answer is literally just a search or a click away. Uh, there's also a huge aftermarket uh, for this scooter and its predecessor. So very strong community around this scooter. And I'll tell you what, there's some scooters out there that haven't developed that community yet. So if you run into an issue or if you have a question, you're basically stuck contacting the company. 
Uh, and so really nice that they have a solid established community. All right, so now that I've talked about all the things that I love about this scooter, let's go over some of the things that I think could use some improvement. Number one, the early firmware updates. Segway was tackling, you know, a lot of issues around overheating, uh, downhill performance, emergency braking performance. And so they were tinkering with it. And all some of the tinkering resulted in reduced performance. And like I mentioned before, we did get some of that back, but it's not the same as it was on day one. So app updates, firmware updates, or a double-edged sword, because sometimes it takes away from the experience. But overall, in my experience, I think Segway's done a fantastic job of improving the safety of the scooter, and they've definitely stayed on top of pumping out updates to the app, to the UI, to make it easy to use, more stable, and allow for more customization of the scooter. Now, the next thing on my list of things to improve is gonna be the turn signals. Now, Segway's done a phenomenal job of mounting those uh, signals up high on the handlebars, and that's really important because it means it's a lot more visible to other people on the road. Mode. But I wish they had gone with end cap style turn signals. Here's the reason why. I've got a wider grip on the scooter and so I have to be really cognizant of where I'm placing my hands because I find that it's very easy for me to cover uh, those turn signals with my hands which basically makes them <laughs> invisible to everyone else around me. Uh, and so end cap style uh, turn signals would solve that. Now there is a downside of end cap style turn signals is that if you drop the scooter, you can break them. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but I would much prefer to have something like that. And I would also like to see some turn signals in the back of the scooter, you know, because let's say you've got wider shoulders or you've got a backpack on, uh, someone behind you might not see those turn signals. Uh, and so it's always nice to have some redundancy, have some signals uh, in the back. Uh, one scooter company that's done a really good job of this lately uh, is the Apollo scooters, uh, specifically on the Apollo Pro, the Apollo City, uh, as well as the newly released Apollo Go. The next thing on my list of things that Segway can improve with this scooter is got to be the brake and taillight cable. I don't know what they were thinking when they put that uh, cable where it is, but it's actually just in front of the rear wheel in a really unfortunate place. I've actually seen some people uh, post online that that cable actually ripped out because some debris that they were riding over got caught in the wheel and ripped the cable out. Uh, this scooter is really well designed. In fact, it's like a tank, but then you have this huge vulnerability in the back with this really long uh, cable adapter just hanging vertically uh, you know, in front of that wheel, which just, just puts it in a really vulnerable spot. Now, the final thing on my list is really just a matter of opinion and a Aesthetics, but I think it's about time that Segway does a refresh on the design of this scooter. Now you might be thinking a refresh, they just released it like less than a year ago. Well, the Segway 9 by Max G2 shares most of its design from its predecessor. It almost looks exactly the same, uh, minus being you know a little bit higher off the ground, a little bit thicker deck, and a rear uh, suspension. Other than that, it's basically the same scooter, and that was designed many years ago. I think it's about time uh, that Segway look at refreshing that design, because heck, go look at their uh, GT1, GT2, go look at the new ST line that they've released. Those are exquisitely, exquisitely designed scooter they look fantastic uh, I think that the Segway can can use you know a facelift but guess what the Segway is a super reliable scooter things built like a tank I basically look at it as the Toyota of the scooter industry and so they've got a really good thing going if they can keep that but give it an updated design no harm in that so after 500 miles of riding the Segway 9Bot Max G2, the question is, would I buy this again in 2024, especially given some of the new entries into the commuter scooter market? The answer is absolutely. The Segway 9Bot Max G2 gets excellent range. It has really good hill climb performance, especially for a single motor commuter scooter. It's got really good app integrations, which allow you to fully customize your scooter, as well as install firmware updates. And it's got a robust community surrounding it. Now, one other thing I wanna mention is that I've got a bunch of other scooters and every time I hop on the 9Bot Max G2, I can't help but think of how well Segway nailed uh, the riding experience with this scooter. It is super smooth and comfortable. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts of riding the Segway 9Bot Max G2 over the last 500 miles. Now, if you've been watching my content for a while now, you'll know that when I review a scooter, I don't just pull it out of the box, ride it for a couple days and tell you that it's the best thing since sliced bread. I actually ride each and every one of these scooters over the long run and follow up with additional content to let you know how it's going. And honestly, the Segway 9 by Max G2, I have zero regrets. It's actually gonna be one of the scooters that I keep in my collection long-term because it is such a joy to ride. 
So what are your thoughts on the Segway 9Bot Max G2? Let me know in the comments below. And if you already own one of these scooters, what has your experience been? I'd love to hear about it. Now, if you found this content helpful, consider liking and subscribing because I do post this kind of content on a weekly and bi-weekly basis. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.